Hello guys, welcome to another exciting episode in our Photoshop design series. In this series, I will show you how I created this flyer in Photoshop. Right? So, if you don't mind, if you've not subscribed, please kindly hit the subscribe button and turn on post notifications so you miss any videos I'm dropping anytime from now. Without having to waste any of your time, let's get started. So, the first thing first, you just put the name. I'll have my name that I want to name this particular flyer here. Not my name, the name of the flyer. So, social media flyer 5x5, five five, resolution 300, RGB, transparent, and click on what? Create. Good. So, next thing you do is go over to this adjustment layer, click on solid color, and I'm going to use all white. So, the code is FFFF, that's in six places, right? So, when you're done, just click OK like this. So, this is the base, this is the background that we're going to be using. Right, so um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over my source file. The link of the source file is in the description of this video, so do well to download them and make use of them. So, the first thing I'm going to start with is the image of this nice looking man, right? So, I'm just going to reduce the size like this, and um, yeah, I'm going to reduce the size. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to conceal in the edges so it blends with the entire feel of the background, right. So to do that, um, create a clipping mask on it first, and I would like to adjust the picture itself. Now this is how I do, most times I use to make my pictures sharp in Photoshop. So the first thing you need to do is go over to filter, right? So when it loads up like this, just some basic changes. So I'm going to start with highlights, I'm going to take it all the way down. So you can play with the settings, it depends on the image you're using. But because of this particular image, I'm going to use mine like this. So I'm going to increase the shadows like this. And um, I'm also going to increase the textures like this. Yeah. And um, a couple of vibrance. And I'm going over to the details tab this is where yeah so I'm going to sharpen this here make sure you don't sharpen it too much make sure you're always saying and you're always looking to uh, make sure you are not going overboard so over here I'm going to increase the highlights like this and I'm um, going to reduce the light right so you can see how much of a difference this has made right so when you're done just click OK like this so this is before and this is after you can see how punchy and how nice it's looking now very sharp so next thing i'm going to do is on the mask make sure you're selecting the soft brush under general brush soft brush click on the mask make sure your foreground color is black and um most times i like using 70 as flow so it's not too much so i'll just go over all around it and um double around the edges like this right if you need to reduce the size of the brush go over to the brush and reduce the size so i'm just going to do that on the edges and erase all of this so it blends well with the background that i have already yeah great do this for this too for this also until it is perfect so you can use the size of the brush like that or use your bracket key on your keyboard to reduce the size when you get a perfect edge or edges around the image then you know you're good to go great so next thing i'm going to do is um okay let me bring this down a bit I'm just going to bring this down yeah so next i'm going to do is i'm going to bring in some text so i'm going over to my text and i'm going to type walk like this and i'm just going to make some changes but before then i'm going to convert this to smart objects that's the image of the guy converted smart objects and i can now start working on the text itself most times when you bring in some images in Photoshop, the images tend to be very heavy. So most times when you do all, everything you need to do, so just, it's a good practice to just convert it to smart object so it becomes lighter and all of that. Yeah. So I'm just going to change this to the font 
of my choice. I'm still going to use Monterat. Um, I'm just trying to explore fonts to use. All right. So um, no. Yep. But not as bold as I want it. I need something bold, something that makes a statement. So mm, no, 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 no. Okay, um, I'm gonna work with this. I'm gonna make it bigger. That's the font I'm using is Angelic Child, right? So I'm just going to rotate this and move this upward like this. Ctrl J to make a duplicate copy of this and double click on the thumbnail. And I'm just gonna type smart. And with all the paparazzi that comes with the smarts. Right, I'm gonna reduce it so it's not too it's not too big, it's not bigger than the work itself. Right. So I'm just gonna separate this from the smarts and leave this like this. Great. Okay, so moving on to the next thing. I'm just gonna bring this down here like this and um, um do one of the things. So I'm gonna select the 12 then. Hold down control, select this, right? And I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. I'm gonna bring it here and um, voila, there you go. Um, I'm trying to look at the positioning of this, making sure that it's centralized. Okay, so once again, select the two of them. And I'm going to change the color. Right, so most times when you're designing, make sure you're using the colors that are already inside of the elements of your design. Now, what I mean is the elements of your design, like for instance, now the element I have here is the picture of this guy. And of course, it's putting on the blue jacket, right? And around him, you have some orange hues, just like I selected like this. So I can modify that orange hues and get this color out of it. And it's something that actually works. So make sure when you're using colors or you're blending colors, make sure you're using colors that you already have in your environment or in layouts of your designs. That's very, very important, All right? So let's move on. So uh, with these two selected, what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to group them, click on this, and now it's just one group, right? So the next thing I'm going to do is, I'm going to create a new layer, and go over to my ellipse tool and uh, with my ellipse selected I'm just going to draw like this it doesn't need to be a perfect circle it's just this is just what I want double click on the thumbnail right to change the color white F F F F in six places click on the mask select the mask make sure you're set to black right so go over to your brush okay so with the brush selected select the brush select the brush make sure you're on the mask and your foreground is set to black and your flow is set to 70 and just do exactly what I'm doing so when you do that for the first one make a duplicate copy of this All right it's your move to bring this down press ctrl T on your keyboard and flip it this way when you're done just press ok so I'm going to clip on this first one I'm going to clip it to the group itself click on the other one too and going to create click on create clipping mask so you just on the text itself it's not on any other thing okay so let's move on so the next thing we're going to be doing is now let me just slightly reduce the picture of this guy just a little bit like this and i'm going to bring in um this next resource file right so I'm just going to move this upwards right you can drag it all the way to the top 
and I'm just going to position this in place well so I'm just going to make a copy of this and I'm going to bring this somewhere here yeah and I'm also going to bring one more here again so it's just three of them like that but now if you notice that this um, 3d um, 3d objects are actually red but then we need it to be orange so first thing you need to do first is I'm going to group all of them group them in one like this you can just name the group I'm just gonna leave mine like this and I'm going to go to adjustment layer and select hue and saturation now with this hue and saturation I'm going to create a clipping mask so it's going to just going to affect only these icons like these 3d objects so I'm just going to move it to plus 25 saturation just follow my settings right so plus 22 and my lightness is minus one yeah so I'm just going to increase my saturation slightly and when that is done I'm just going to start working on each one of them so I'm going to go to Gaussian Blur this first one I'm just gonna click OK so that's why I want that one to be yeah great so for the second one the radius is not going to be as strong as the first one okay and I'm also going to do for the last one the biggest one I'm gonna do that again so it's not going to be as strong as the remaining ones All right um, I think somewhere around here is good good great so so the next thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be adding this but make sure you are on this position in the layers and the way I'm working in Photoshop it's all about layers right so I'm just going to make sure it's directly above the first one create a mask and with your brush selected just conceal these areas I don't want it to be too obvious that you have so many things going on there I want to work smart to be there and obvious right so just conceal those parts that's the only thing you need to do with this image right so the purpose of this image is just so you don't have so one flat image just white peer, peer white like that and you understand so I'm going to convert this to my object I'm going to go to noise and I'm going to add noise right if you observe closely I use this effect in some of my designs right especially the posters and all of that there's this kind of effect it gives to it I don't even know how to explain it that so but then that's what I do most of the times all right so um, so create a new layer directly above all of this and I'm just going to add my text to it
okay so with this done i'm just going to go over and make it bold yeah so that the message is clear of course and it's obvious right so i'm just going to color balance all of this so for midtones i'm just going to do this can follow my settings and for shadows i'm going to do this follow my settings and for highlights i'm going to do this now i'm going to go towards the cyan i'm going to go towards the yellow here great there you go okay so guys i've come to the end of this design session i hope you've loved it if you've liked this video please give it a thumbs up and um, please don't forget to subscribe i'll see you in the next video ciao